And then at the end of it, they said, so the thing is, slightly unexpectedly, I think we are probably looking to recast the Doctor and how do you feel about maybe stepping into that? I mean, totally out of the blue. Right, right. <laughs> you thought you were there for a screening. I th exactly. I thought we were just having sort of, you know, snacks and a, <laughs> and watching a video. Um, I think it was on a VHS. That's how long ago it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a Betamax. Well, not cavemen. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was it was extraordinary, and I I just uh, I, I laughed. I actually just laughed for quite a long time, and then then, then Russell. But then I said, "Can I have a really long coat?" Woo! Um, <laughs> so you did have it's a wardrobe true. question. I, I did that. Um, that was me showing where the coat would go. So for anyone at the back, you can't see. <laughs> There I did go. that. That's what I did. <laughs> uh -oh. All danger! Uh -oh. <laughs> Come on, Chicago! Get dangerous! <laughs> um, I do all my own stunts. Clearly. Uh, and then I laughed. And then Russell very cleverly and very presciently said, D just, just, just calm down. You're going to have to think about this more than you think you're going to have to think about this. Because in a way, it's sort of be careful what you wish for. It's one of those things that I'd never really entertained the possibility of being offered this part. Apart from the thing, it had been off the telly for years. It wasn't really a thing that was out there. So it had just come back, and Chris, Chris Eccleston was this amazing bit of powerful casting that they got. It, it didn't really feel like that. Woo! Uh, it didn't really feel like anything that was going to be out there, you know. Um, so he said, so he said, go away and think about it. Don't, don't say anything tonight. And he was right, actually, because I, I then went into it. I go, oh, do I want to do it? Do I really want to? Is this, is this what I want to do? Is this? But the part thing is, nobody knew if people would like it. It hadn't been on the TV yet. It might have been a disaster. Uh, it might not have caught on. It might have. It, and there was a lot to kind of. And also, you're sort of, you have to then confront your eight year old self, you know, and, and think, well, you sort of fantasised about this as an eight-year-old, mm -hmm. and now it's here, and is, well, is that a bit weird? And Russell was saying this because that had been his experience, you know, because he was a lifelong fan, and suddenly he was asked to reinvent the show, and, and he did it, he was very enthusiastic about it, but at the same time he felt, as, as the kind of responsibility dawns on you, that you're going to be responsible for this thing that is so that you love so much, that you're so invested in. Uh, it, it then takes on a slightly different flavour. Well, and not just you as an artist, but the whole country and and the, a huge fan base internationally. Yeah. I was so invested. And, and yeah, yeah. So you do have to kind of you take that on board, and and uh, and then then you could do all that. And you think, do you know what? I'm not. And, and for a couple of days, I turned it down. I said, I'm not going to do this. This just feels like too big a deal, and th this would be. It just doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right. How can I follow Chris Eggleston? How can you do this? How can it, but this doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And then I thought, oh, who are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> because if I do that, I then have to watch somebody else doing it. Oh. Right. Knowing I could have had a shot and turned it down. That wasn't gonna work either. So, <laughs> so in the end, I just took a deep breath and got on with it. Well, you know what? We are all so glad you took that deep breath, right guys? <laughs> You know your experience as a doctor, but I, I want to kind of like transition because you've you've done a million interviews over the years, but now you've kind of turned the tables and you've launched your own podcast. Woo! So first, subscribe what, on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere else that you get your podcasts. <laughs> Tell us what inspired you to you know flip the tables and become the interviewer. That's yeah, it's a very good question. I'm not entirely sure. It sort of happened by accident. Um, uh, it, it was I was. I was making a show in America the last summer, so I was kind of away from home a bit. I had time to kind of do things that you don't really have when you've got lots of kids. Um, uh, and I was listening to podcasts more than, and I, I love them. I've always loved podcasts, and I was listening to one in particular. Alec Baldwin does a fantastic podcast called "Here's the Thing," where he basically just sits and little ripple for Alec Baldwin. Woo! Yeah, uh, where he sits and just chats to people that he 
likes and admires. And I, and I was very taken with this, and he's really good at it, and he's very cool. And I thought, oh, if only I could be that cool. It was, it was aspirational, really, from my own part. And I thought, there should be a British version of this. And this, then I had a conversation with my agent, sort of just shooting the breeze, as you Americans say, um, <laughs> about podcasts in general. And before I knew it, she'd set up a meeting and I was in a room and there was all these people going, we can make this happen. And I'm going, oh, I, I'm sort of joking. Um, <laughs> and we were just having snacks. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I was no, on. Um, and then they said, who went your guest list be? And I went, oh, well, it would be interesting to talk to Judy Whittaker, wouldn't it? That'd be fun. And then Olivia Coleman, would she do it? I could get her to do it. And then suddenly, before I knew, Woo! it was like, okay, well, we're recording next week. I'm going, so uh... so <laughs> So it sort of happened to me. Um, but I, but I, then it was great, because then I did get to sit in a room with Olivia and Judy and, and then all these other lovely people who, who agreed to uh, come on board. And, and it was just, I just, that was fun. Is there a certain amount of freedom to be, you know, behind the mic and not necessarily the subject of the oh, interview? Oh, totally, yeah. You're much more pleasing. <laughs> um, and also, I think you can, because, you know, as you say, I, I, I guess, because when you're in things you do, you get interviewed a lot. And it's quite interesting to kind of go, what would I do if it was the other way around? How would I change it? How, what would I do differently? How, what, what does my sort of position, what kind of ways in does that give me to... And I, I, I've no interest in sort of revealing sort of, you know, things that people don't want to reveal or, you know, all the guests who come on, it's very much like, listen, if, we, if there's anything you don't want to talk about, we'll take it out afterwards. Well, you know, it's all very... Nobody's under threat. Nobody feels... Because often with interviews, not today, I hasten to add, <laughs> this is very lovely. It just <laughs> us and a few of our closest personal friends. Woo! But... But often with interviews, it can feel a little bit like you're, you're, you're kind of guarding and, oh, I don't want to talk about that, and I, I, I've got a, a line I've got to take on that, and I'm not allowed to talk about episode three of this, and there's all sorts of things you must say and things you don't want to say and your own sort of personal red lines that you don't want to cross, all that. So it, it, it's just an interesting to turn that around and see what that reveals. And I think uh, you end up getting, I don't think, it's not that you uh, uncover revelations about people, but I think you get to see people, or hear people rather, um, in, in a way that, uh, a sort of slightly more relaxed and formal way, hopefully. Absolutely. I loved your interview with Jody, and oh, I, that came you. out like I think a few weeks ago, Woo! Um, and I'm wondering, did you have any advice for her when she was announced? No, no, <laughs> no, I think we sort of talked about this in fact, it, because, well, you wouldn't give it, well, no, that's not entirely true, you don't, I have no advice in terms of how to play the role, or how to choose your costume or you know what the sonic screwdriver does that's all nonsense that's up to her that's it's hers now she must decide all those things and, and she's far too experienced and adept and creative to need advice from me about that she's that's her she it's her thing to take it from with it i think what you can talk about and indeed what matt smith and i talked about what peter capaldi and i talked about because you're part of a very small sort of self-help yes. group because um, <laughs> it's quite a specific attention that this show gets. It's lovely, it's humbling, it's a privilege to be in the middle of it, but it does take a bit of getting used to. So that's what we all talked about, and that's what we continue to talk about, in fact, uh, as it sort of unfolds. Because it is, it is now a show that has an international uh, 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 appeal, and that you, you find yourself recognised for where it's just about wherever you go now. There's hardly a, a corner of the world where there's not somebody who's got to go. Um, um, All you have to do is tap So it, it's, it, that takes a bit of getting used to because there's not many other acting jobs that are that ubiquitous, that are that sort of loved. It's nice because it's a lovely show to be known for because people tend to feel very affectionately towards it. But it's just that you, you sort of lose a bit of your anonymity. Well, the show is a legend in itself. Yeah, yeah I mean, it yeah. transcends, you know, cultures and countries and, and yeah. everything. So it's amazing. Aside from your work on Doctor Who, I loved you on Jessica Jones. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> so, so Funny good. you should see that. On the podcast this very Tuesday is, <laughs> is Kristen Ritter. Oh! Yeah. Um, it's... She's fantastic, and you should, if you've not subscribed already, Woo! hit the subscribe button. Do go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Woo! Click 
that subscribe button. Yep. I was supposed to say smash that subscribe button. Pommel, pommel. <laughs> Thrash that subscribe button. Woo! I don't know why you want to be so violent, but apparently you should, I urge you, yes. to hear Kristen on Tuesday. Absolutely. Well, tell us a little bit about how you developed your character for Jessica Jones and, and your time on the show. I just, I, again, I just read these amazing scripts. Um, Melissa Rosenberg and her writing team just created this wonderful world. I mean, obviously inspired by um, Brian Michael Mendes and, and, and the, the, the comic books that they came from. But, uh, but it, it was just, you know, it was all there on the page. And this, and this character who, uh, you know, although he'd been, he'd been in comic books from way, way back. Daredevil number, anyone? Four. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the, the Purple Man, as he was initially known, and then Kilgrave, as he became known later, has existed for decades. But but they they created this very sort of uh, villain with a very kind of modern dilemma, and they gave him a, the, the, the psychology of that was fascinating. You know, if if, if you are if you are cursed with this ability, where everyone around you acquiesces at all times, how can you? negotiate real life? How can you become a rounded human being? Because how can you ever know if anybody is responding to you naturally or not? And that will that will damage you. Of course it will damage you. Um, and, and then the, the whole sense of what that does within a relationship. Can you have a relationship? And obviously he responded very badly to that and, and did some appalling things. Um, but but it, but it, but also what's what's fascinating about that is you kind of understand how he gets there, and that I think is what's brilliant about the writing that that uh, for everything that you despise about Kilgrave, you, there's also a kind of you can trace the roots as to why he's there, which makes him on some level sympathetic, and all that's complicated and difficult, and that's what makes a great character. Yeah, you can understand. I mean, and and that's an interesting point actually, because in a different way than the Doctor, you know, that you have the origin story and all the comics to look back on for Kilgrave. As an actor, did you go back and, and read as much as you could, or did you just sort of know and understand the origin story and then, you know, have your own take on it? So much more of the latter. I read the more recent, the, the comic books, in fact, that that Jessica Jones specifically had come from. Right. I, read, I read the Alias comic books, um, uh, and I sort of dabbled a bit. But you. It, it, the trouble with comic book continuity is it can sometimes be a little bit contradictory. A little. It's not all, it doesn't, it, I think if you kind of go, sorry, sorry, uh, Melissa, uh, uh, Kristen, sorry, one second. Um, it's just that in Daredevil 42, there's a line <laughs> that does contradict this, because he, he drinks coffee here and he says in, you know, issue nine of Super Spider-Man that he wants to drink <laughs> coffee, so we're going to have to rewrite. You know, you can get... You can get over focused on that, I think. Yeah, and it's finding that balance between it's finding, being it's always, staying true to the. Yeah, to the you've always result. got to. It, it, yeah. You've always got to be true to telling the story in the most effective, in the most effective way, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to open it up to questions. So, right. if you guys would like, line up at the mics in the aisles, and while they get lined up, everybody here obviously loves you. They love 